you guys can start to go the introduction and stuff. Uh, and uh, three, two, one. Okay, having somebody die. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind ourselves and uh, how we got to Linux and kind of what's cool about it. Uh, uh, I'm an old school noob. I've been on Linux for a long time, but I haven't learned anything yet. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm not going to blather on by myself, but I'll let anybody else go on. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I'm Morningstar. I've been using Linux for about eight or nine years. I started on Ubuntu and stay with that for a long time and in the last three or four years I've really branched off and tried to explore and learn as much about the about the operating system as I possibly could stuff into my brain um, yeah well I'm Irish uh, compared to these guys I am a newbie I've only been on Linux for about a year and a half now uh, I started off with Linux Mint and then I went tried all the other distros out there. I was a distro hopper until I fell onto Arch and uh, I've been on it for about a year now. So uh, just continually learning and uh, yeah. Um, I forgot to say on Clipto's and uh, I was I was on uh, Ubuntu from uh, Dapper to Maverick then sort of uh, merged over to uh, Mint then uh, found Arch, and I've been here ever since, man. It's hard to give up Arch, man, when you've got the use, uh, Arch user repositories, um, you got the rollback, okay, you got the build service and everything else. It's just, it's just hard, man. I've, I've gone to other distros, but I can never stay there. Oh, yeah, I tried moving away from Arch, and it's the, that AUR is, brings you back, especially, and Pac-Man. Pac-Man is one of the most powerful package managers out there i believe i've tried them all yum zipper um app get and i i, I feel at home on uh, Batman. yeah I, I guess uh I, i'm the odd man out i've got arch on one of my machines but on my on my macbook i'm running ubuntu i've definitely fallen in love with things like debian and we'll talk about that more too when we bring up our our distro types our distro types uh segment but I've definitely had my hands dirty in a lot of different kinds, and I, I, I really love them all. I definitely love the AUR, but I, I definitely love my experience on Linux in general. It's freedom, baby. Exactly. You, exactly. You can make anything that you want. You're not, <clears throat> you know, um, stuck into one little uh, frame. I don't like the, the desktop, desktop environment. environment. Oh, go ahead, sorry. I, I was, uh, what's so sad about it, right, is for, you know, someone on Windows, someone on Mac, I mean, you do have a few tools, but you know, you're pretty much stuck on that, and, you know, there's no other desktop environment or window manager. You just kind of, you know, they're little hacks and tools, but, you know, that's pretty much it, and, and that's all you get, and then you pay for all the upgrades. So yeah, speaking of speaking of new new stuff and, and things going on, um, Irish, you had talked about wanting to do a a segment on on some some terminal commands for people who are who are just getting into this. Yeah, um, every week or every podcast that we do, we're gonna do a uh, uh, like a new like a newbie corner. So myself or Morningstar or Kleptos will uh, you know spout something that. Uh, took us a while maybe to learn that would benefit a new user switching over to Linux. So I moved to Arch strictly for commands to learn the command prompt. So I can uh, show you guys a little bit of uh, uh, some basic stuff uh, on the command line. Cool. What are you going to teach us? Well, I'll, I'll try to compare it to the command prompts in like Windows. Um, so if you're trying to view like your home directory and you
you want to list out all the packages that you have. Uh, if you just type in ls, that lists out everything that's in there. So this would be similar to the directory, the dir command in the command prompt. So if you wanted to change to, uh, say, your downloads folder, you would do the same thing as in Windows, which would be CD, and then whatever the uh, the folder that you're trying to do. But uh, unlike uh, in Windows, Linux is case sensitive, so make sure that you're doing it through like capitalized and stuff like that. Yeah, one thing I'll definitely throw in too is that um, about changing directories or or whatnot. If I have two directories and one's like downloads A and one's downloads B and I could actually do like star B and switch into I could glob it that way and switch into downloads B I mean that's a poor example but you can definitely you don't have to have the whole string typed out for long commands if I understand if I remember correctly exactly so if you just know what it starts with so if you like downloads you just do DO and then you hit the tab button it will auto complete so say um, I have in my main folder my bookmarks for my Firefox. Say I wanted to move that over to my uh, documents folder. I w all I would have to do is, uh, and you have to be root for this, if you wanted to move it, you would uh, type in CD. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll try that again. You just type in sudo mv for move and then the, the document that you want and then you want to hit space and then type in the where you want to move it to and it will move that document over into it so um also uh, be good to know people about you know permissions when they're copying and, and, and moving things um you know, if you want to retain the permissions of a file you're copying, you just do dash p for permissions. Uh, that way, you know, things don't sort of muck up when you transfer them over between, you know, different accounts and such. So what you're saying is if I want to move something, I'd use MV. And then if I wanted to keep the pr same permissions, I'd do dash p before the file name? As far as, as, far as I remember, um, if, if you move them, they're going to retain their their uh, their original permissions anyway. If you copy them, it really depends on uh, the permission itself and the account. Although it's been a while since I had to go back in my brain and remember all this. What if I wanted to know where where I was, and if I'm in the terminal and and I've messed with my with my uh, with my prompt a little bit? How do I know? What directory I'm in. That is a very good um, tool to know. Um, all you would have to do is put type in PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory, and that will show you um, who or where you're exactly at. So if I type in PWD, it should show that I'm in my home folder. Also, a good uh, thing to learn also is that. You know, when you're tired of typing out slash home slash whatever your username is, um, you can just type, um, let's say if you want a CD to a user CD, and the tilde key, and that will automatically take you to your home directory. Correct. And also, if you wanted to move to your root, you just type in a forward slash, uh, which would move you to your root. If you, if, um, if you didn't know what your... If, say, you had more multiple uh, users on one account, you wanted to find out who you who you are uh, on the command prompt. Say you SSH'd or telneted into another thing, and you wanted to know what the user was. Uh, I kind of like this one. It's just, who am I? You type in all one word, and it will tell you what the username is uh, for that particular session. You know, speaking yeah, of users... It's also good to see to see uh, who else is on your machine. <laughs> there you go. Ooh. Exactly. 
But these are some of the basic ones, uh, some of the basic commands that I use just about every single day. Um, we'll can, we'll uh, expand on these as you know our podcast goes on. But uh, I think this is a, a good base to start using the command prompt. Uh, GUIs are nice, but they can get in your way. But I, I'm more of a, a terminal guy right now. Yeah, I, you know, I think that, you know, if you really want to get some work done, uh, obviously you got to do it in the terminal. Uh, there's so many shortcuts. There's so many quicker ways to do things besides, you know, clicking and dragging and, and all that craziness. And the terminal is really where it's at. And if you really want to understand Linux in itself and its guts, if you will, the terminal is where it's at. And if you want to uh, really, really learn, you sort of build Linux from scratch, whether it's uh, Slackware uh, Gen 2 or Arch Linux, and that way you learn how to fix the things that you break. Exactly. Because uh, those higher higher distros, the Arch Linuxes, the Slackwares, the Gen 2s, yes, they have GUIs for them, but it's they can get in the way, and it's just faster. Once you learn how to use the the command prompt or the terminal um, to fix them, because it's just one simple command instead of having to click this and go to the next screen, click that, and then you're fixed or something like that. Or just one command would just be be beneficial for it. Yeah, I can also, definitely. Also, uh, I think. I oh, can... sorry. Uh, later on, it later on in the, in the probably next segment or the next show. Um, we could talk about uh, bash aliases, and, and and that way they're like little simple, you know, things that you can do to set up command with a with a command alias that you would know, you know, that would do a certain thing that you want to do all the time. And I have a bunch of them, and I have hundreds of them, and they're very useful even for newbies. One thing I was gonna say too is when it came, you know, when I started using computers was back when DOS was the way to go. And one of the things I had a hard time with when everything became, you know, a user interface, a GUI, you know, a, we had Windows and we had Windows 95 or 3.1 or, or anything else, I feel like I lost a lot of power that I had over the machine when I had to type in commands. Oh, absolutely. I remember one point in time in Windows, um, you know, they really didn't even really want, to want you to go into the DOS prompt. I mean, you, I, I believe, I forget which, which version it was, where you actually had to go and give them, you know, the administrator password just to get at the command line. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I think a lot of people, because many of them, like new users especially, coming from Windows to Linux, that they're still kind of scared about the command prompt because of their experiences on windows or on dos if they're you know of a certain age that it's just scary because of their experiences before but especially now linux uh the, the command prompt is one of your most powerful tools if, if, if even though it's not the only tool uh, absolutely, and also I think that here's a good tip to go with uh, for the newbies. Um, you know, even if you're still on Windows, go get, uh, get yourself a VirtualBox and install that live CD, whatever Linux distro you want to put on it. Put on, put it on there, and break it, fix it, break it, fix it, test it. You know, that way, if, if something goes wrong, you know, then you can go back to an original snapshot of a VirtualBox and. You can start back from right where you were, started off, and so that's a good way to, you know, get your hands on some Linux without worrying about the after effects. The other thing too oh, is uh, when you when you're using that live CD, um, like Ubuntu, if if you got a machine that there's no operating system on there, you're just gonna throw Ubuntu on, and you don't know a lot of the command prompts, and you are a little nervous. You can really bounce back and forth between, you know, the the package, the package toolkit or uh, the Ubuntu store they call it and learn on the line to do the command line stuff with the safety net of still being able to install stuff through, 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 a, through a GUI. What were you going to say earlier there, Irish? No, I was just uh, agreeing 
with uh, your statement before, Kleptos. It, uh, uh, you pretty much nailed it right on the head. Hey, trust me, man, I've broken many Linux, <laughs> many Linux distros in VirtualBox, Arch Linux being the first and foremost. Oh, yeah. I, plus, I, I also definitely recommend if you're on Windows or you're on Ubuntu or whatever distro you're on, I suggest putting it in a virtual machine, going through the install process, just putting through its paces just to see if it's for you. I still do it. I did it for uh, when I first decided to switch over to Linux is I put Ubuntu Mint. I have all these distros on my virtual machine on my Windows 7 computer and it uh, it's just I still go through and try to break it and it's a uh, it's just a better way of doing it so in case something does happen you're, you're not destroying your whole system and then you'd have to start over and you know pave and all that kind of stuff Yeah, the only reason I had, I had brought up that when you when you don't have that as an option, that there are you know, I definitely agree. Like if I had if I had invested in VirtualBox on Windows XP, way back when when I was first playing with Linux, with Linux, I would have saved myself a lot of hard a hard learning process. But I definitely do do know from experience that when I was when I had plunged headfirst into Linux, there was a way out, and there is one of the best things for new for new users is to go online and look up those wikis and look up those tutorials because you know it, it saves like I said it saves you trouble when you're when you're already immersed in it having somebody who's already had to figure this out and that was one of the big reasons we were doing these newbie segments in the first place was to save folks from the struggles we had to go through on our own oh my god man I, I can I can remember um, as I said in the ad pick session where I was uh, using Slack on my my uh, uh, 386SX computer, and there really wasn't uh, you know a whole reservoir of information. There wasn't no Arch you know wiki. Uh, there really really what well, Google wasn't as great as it, as it was as it is now. And so you know I I had to pretty much learn by buying this big old 500 page book that came with a, you know a CD and 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 learn and figure it out. And you know you have you have a wealth of information at your fingertips, and you know it, it doesn't hurt to read a bit before you really jump into it head first. Exactly, I think you know the Linux ecosystem has definitely changed since the twenty odd years that it's been around. You know, it's it's especially it's more community driven. Like if you have an issue back in like when it first started you were like SOL, you had to figure it out on your own and there wasn't too many people using Linux at the time. Where now, there's millions and like businesses and like NASA's using it on its International Space Station. It's, it's grown exponentially and so if you have an issue, you can go on to a forum or ask, a, I'm sure there's a lot, a lot more people than you expect to be using Linux and you can ask for them for help. Yeah, you can definitely jump into, like, that's one of the things that makes the Lin the LDC, the Linux distro community, so great to me, is we have people from all sorts of distributions and experience levels, and there's an IRC where, you know, we, we, we have, we intentionally are supportive of people who come in with new questions, which just makes it a great place for people who, who, uh, who, who are new or le want learning something or just want to hear somebody else's experience and make make a decision of whether they go to a new window manager or try a new distro. Oh man, you don't know how much help I receive, uh, you know, from the Linux distros community, IRC, you know, and PDQ and Akubase I, 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 I and the rest of those guys and gals. Uh, I mean, they really helped me out. Even though I'm knowledgeable about Linux, man, it's just, it, it's vast. It's amazing. You can never know it all. And so you, nobody can say they know it all. Even even Linus can't say he knows it all. So that's what that's what we're here for. You know, they help me and we'll help you. Exactly. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's about it for the for the for this segment. Um, we had talked also about about some news that had come on in in Linux recently between a lot of people have heard that Valve has 
Valve has started doing you know Linux support, and their Steam OS is Linux based, and you know we just had a AAA title released, uh, ported over to Linux was Borderlands Two, and it, it's it's we were talking about how pe so many more people are using it. It's changing. It's really becoming a a, a more um, competitive operating system than it was six seven years ago. Yeah, it's even sooner than that. Like a year ago, there wasn't a lot of uh, games out for Linux. There's just a handful. Now there's hundreds. Uh, I think, you know, Borderlands 2 especially because it was so big when it got first released and now it's being released for Linux. A lot of Linux users and even uh, those people hesitant uh, who are moving over to Linux because, you know, there's not many games will definitely drive some new uh, people over to Linux. Also, though, the benefit I th of uh, Linux and gaming and development is that Linux is an open platform, okay? If there's something missing in Linux or maybe, you know, OpenGL isn't your cup of tea, well, help develop something better. And, and as opposed to, you know, Windows, it's, you know, it's evolving so fast, it's morphing into God knows what monstrosity. Man, Linux is rock solid and has been for 20 years. And, and you can build something on Linux that is all your own as far as gaming or apps or anything else. It's an open platform to do as you will. And I think eventually in the long run, Linux will be the base for gaming, period, in the near future. Yeah, one of the things that really strikes me is with, with this releases from Valve, and they've talked about same-day releases for the pre-sequel uh, from uh, Borderlands and same-day so same release for Windows and Linux. And the amount of utilities that Valve is bringing over to Linux users for development, for game development, it's, it's you know, it's happening. And, uh, you know, my experience was way back when I first started using Linux, you know, this, the story was it's great if you want to check your email or go on web browsing or listen to music, but it's not there for gaming. And I'm really, really glad to have seen that whole thing come full circle. And now we're right up there and we're being able to use a very solid and capable operating system, and now we have a company that's backing it and making things happen for us. Well, people are making movies, you know, with, with Linux now. I mean, pretty much everything you could possibly think of from, from robots with uh, death rays coming out of their eyes or anything else, it, it's being written and developed on Linux. Linux is the platform. And, and I, I think when... Uh, Windows when it comes out to Windows 20 comes out, I, I think that eventually, yeah, it will be morphed into such a monster that no one really want to deal with it. It changes too much, and for these guys in development, change is bad. Yeah, I was just uh, doing some. Yeah, there's over close to 800 games for Linux, and uh, I think uh, that's just awesome. Yeah, I definitely have seen in my time the, the change. And I think that I, I wonder, you know, I guess my question to you guys too is what do you, what do you see in the future for Linux? Like you, you, where we got server, servers all over the globe and, and around the globe in space are running, are running Linux. You know, um, it's making it on the desktop now for gaming. Like I wonder, it's on the mobile platform. And yeah, it's, it's really cool to see it all happen. Yeah, I think um, you're almost starting to see, like, the other proprietary OSs out there copying or taking little bits and pieces from Linux and implementing it into them. You know, because I, I did the tech preview for Windows 10, and it, uh, that start menu does awfully look like uh, the KDE. Uh, so they're just taking little bits and pieces of what works for uh, in Linux and adopting it for them. And, and Mac especially, they if you you know open up that uh, launcher, it does look like uh, the application's launcher in GNOME, very very similar to it. Yeah, I've noticed too that in Mac OS, um, what is it, Yosemite? There's a significant similarity between how they're how they're Windows look in GTK, um, you know, I, I definitely noticed a lot looks very similar to GTK3, 
And, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with people because that's one of the things I love about Linux is being somebody that writes small programs for a hobby. I can give my stuff away. People can change it and edit it. And it's really cool that some of these big names who have been big names in computing like Microsoft and, and Apple are, are grabbing little things here and there and seeing what works for us and making it work for them too. And I personally think that's great. Yeah, didn't uh, also Linus... I think... Go ahead, Klepto. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Irish. No, I was just saying, wasn't, uh, wasn't Linus quoted in saying, you know, uh, it, once, you know, Microsoft and Apple starts adopting what we did, I know I've won, or something similar to that. I think we're starting to see uh, a little bit of that now. Well, I mean, recently what uh, OS took from GNOME you know, with all those uh, decorations and things. I didn't even like it on Gnome the way it looked, but, you know, they stole it, so it, it must be good. But uh, I, I, I think that when you have, you know, a free operating system, free software, and that's available to all, it's got to catch on. And it's far more advanced than what it was 20 years ago. I mean, for God's sakes, back then you were you were lucky if XORG started up. Okay, now I mean things are, things are way better than. So I think now a lot a lot of those companies like Microsoft and and Apple are kind of you know shaking in, in their boots a little bit uh, because the the competition is there and it's been there. Yeah, I had a, a reading of a news article one point, and you know. The, the Microsoft made a comment that you know the Linux isn't a threat. Um, it's like OS two. Everybody remembers OS two, and you know look where that went. But I think the big difference is that we're not here to make. We're not trying to make a fortune in an empire on on selling software. And you know I think that's I think that's one of the big selling points for me. It's hard for you know developers, but when you start getting things like like Steam. And they're, they're, you know, we can, they can, the developers can make their money bringing it to Linux. Then, then yeah, man, we've won. It's, 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 it's great. You know, I finally, I don't have to worry about, is this going to work on Linux? And there's something, you know, between LibreOffice, between OpenShot, there's some platform, some application in Linux that I can do the things I need to do. Amen, man. Uh, past one in the, the cracker, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm with it, man. That, that's what's beautiful about Linux, and that's what's kept me here so long. And it's gonna, it's gonna evolve. Uh, hell, I mean, without Linux and BSD, 90% of all commerce uh, around the world would never get done. You think anything's gonna get done on IIS? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, plus, you know. We talked about games, but you know, if you're not a gamer, they just recently did uh, brought uh, Netflix support to Linux, which is that that if I wasn't on Linux already, I think that would have sold me right there. Yeah, that's huge. I'm I'm gonna say it, man. Don't flame me or complain. <laughs> but I got a Netflix account, man, and I'm hey, I'm happy, man. Exactly. You know, plus. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable how much, in the short amount of time I've been on Linux, how much it's changed. And even the communities, uh, through all the other distros out there, they have evolved and changed and stuff. And not even, like, you know, the recent vulnerabilities of Shellshock and Heartbleed and all that could really damage uh, open source because who knows how much, how many issues you know, those closed source people have. They just, they, pro they they could be covering up like a major vulnerability as far as we know. But because it's open source and anyone off the street can, you know, look at the code, it's all big news and it's bad for, you know, for that. But I don't think, you know, Shellshock or Heartbleed will do anything to, you know, increase the size of the Linux uh, world. Yeah, I think you really said it too, is... When, when it's community driven and it's community projects and the community can, can chime in and say, hey, this is a vulnerability, we can also chime in and say, hey, I, hey, I found a way to fix it. And um, one thing I'd like to do, talk about before we close is like, you know, t speaking of ways to fix things is, uh, 
if anybody, any of you guys wanted to talk a little bit about the LDC and so that people who are, who are our viewers and they're watching this podcast for the first time can know a little bit about what the LDC is and what we do and what's available for folks and where to find us. Yeah, I can uh, start off. Uh, again, I've been on Linux for a year and I quickly found the LDC. The LDC is for any and all Linux and BSD people out there or someone who's interested in Linux. It doesn't matter if you're on Ubuntu, Gentoo, Fedora, OpenSUSE, anything at all, you're not going to be judged because, you know, there are some communities out there who will say, don't like, you know, they hate Ubuntu, they hate Fedora, they hate this and that. You, you won't get any, you know, flack for whatever distro you are. If it works for you, it works for you. It, as long as you're happy with the, the computer system that you have, you know, good good job. You know, you, you're, you're taking a step into a larger world. And I think the LDC is we're always helping people, uh, even if you've been on Linux for eight years, nine years, ten years, whatever, you're still learning something. And one person who's been on it for maybe a year like myself could... Uh, can help uh, uh, even an experienced user with something. I've been on it. I've, I've, I've only been on the LDC since about February. Um, but immediately when I came in there, I mean, everybody was nice. Everybody was helpful. And really good, healthy debates on on different things and the different aspects of, oh, is, you know, which is better, Bash, Fish, or Z, SH, or whatever have you. And it doesn't really matter, you know, well, things you're using you know it's all linux and it's all love and it's 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 a community and it's people that are doing the exact same thing you're doing and they're not bashing you for what you do that they're not doing uh, uh, when it comes all down to it it's all about linux it's all about distros and it's all about the community yeah one thing i'll definitely say that i have found in my time with the with the ldc is definitely it's one of the friendliest communities i've been part of I'm happy every day when I get to learn something and not be judged because I didn't know it, or I get to share something and not judge someone else because they didn't know it. And I feel like that's a really, really powerful element and one of the things that keeps me keeps me with the LDC. You know, it keeps me on the forums. It keeps me in the IRC. It's helping me. It's given me all the more reason. Let's do this. Let's do this. This this show. Let's 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 share with the with the Linux community in a way that is is just helpful. Exactly, and uh, again, if you guys uh, you know, wanted to know where to find the LDC, it's uh, www.linuxdistrocommunity.com, and we have an IRC channel and a Mumble channel, so if you don't feel like talking, you can go into the IRC. There's forums and uh, anything that you can think of. We have game uh, servers, so if you like to play Borderlands 2, um, Team Fortress 2, uh, No More Room in Hell, some Steam games. We have our own uh, game servers that uh, every now and then uh, a bunch of us go in and play. We even have a Minecraft server and a Zenotic server, don't we? Exactly, yeah. Yes, we do. Awesome. So if you're into the Minecraft, uh, we you can come into our server and uh, uh, build whatever your heart can uh, can think of. Also, uh, what I also think is great is that... Uh, you know, once you sign up, uh, you can sign up. They have a Media Goblin server, so you can post all your latest screenshots and whatnot. They have a lot going on there, far more than I can really take in <laughs> right now. But uh, it's a great place, place with great people, and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a really a credit to the, the founders of it. And it's a really progression to talk about what's great about Linux and, and about learning. I think foremost, learning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks, yeah, guys. I'm sorry, go ahead, Morning. No, I was just saying thanks for all that information. I'm happy to call everyone on the LDC as my friend. Um, I come on every night, and I'm always happy to talk with everyone there. So, uh, yeah, again, kudos to the founders uh, of the LDC. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you know where to find us. We'll, we'll keep pumping out shows and keep giving new input or tips or some new news. We'll talk about uh, tons of different things along the time here, but um, 
yeah, thanks for thanks for taking time to listen to the show, and we hope to see you guys again next time. <laughs>